Right here, but before we do, there was an announcement here, a very important announcement. On this page here, it says Tejas. Lunch on your piece of paper you have that has a schedule it says where you're going to lunch. You're going to be going to the Tejas room. Got it? Tejas. That's Spanish for Tejas. <laughs> oh, you know what it is? Juan Mas. That's all the Spanish I know. Uh, you decided to come to the Business Wisdom from Drug Dealer Session. I thank you guys very much. We have lots of options. So, you guys are taking a chance. This is oddballish. So, that makes all of you oddballs. You're cool with that. And these sponsors here want to make sure that they reach the eyeballs. All. So, here you go. Make sure that these folks here make this all possible. It is unbelievable the opportunity we have to go to an event with quality education that costs us nothing but time it's because of these people here. Fabulous. All right, so this is a VSP. VSOP stands for Very Special One-Time Performance. <laughs> never given this presentation, probably will never ever give it again. So that's bad. So VSOP is what you're here for. Who has seen this movie, The King's Speech? You have, what's special about this movie? Meaning as, what does King George have that he has to overcome? He's, oh, King George stutters, huh? Well, King George and I have got something in common. I'm not. He stutters. I stutter. I'm on really good behavior. Hopefully, we'll continue to be on really good behavior. But just be warned, I use the same sort of trick he uses in the movie. Hopefully, you won't notice the tricks I use, because if I do it well, you don't notice. But if I do it poorly, you do notice. So that's one heads up, is that I do it. And another heads up is that I do approach marketing from a different angle. I take my job seriously but myself lightly, I try to have fun. So that's why I'm trying to do something that's oddballish with this title of drug dealer. This is a molecule of a drug that I sold. Yes, I am a drug dealer. <laughs> I have sold drugs. This is caffeine. <laughs> Which is a legal drug. It's still addictive. You all know. Many of us that try to stop drinking coffee in the morning, and you get those raging headaches. Yeah, you do. I'm lucky, somehow I am immune to that. I can stop coffee for two weeks, fine, I don't get the headaches. I'm not sure why that's the case, but still, I drink a lot of coffee. And I sold a lot of coffee back in the day. Spent eight years back at Starbucks. Not a product marketer, I'm a retail marketer. My job was to drive traffic in the store, once traffic was in the store, to hopefully get folks to buy more goods that we were selling, be it coffee, beverages, be it whatever. And years ago, we knew that sampling sold. We did a study once back in the day where for every five samples we would sample out in those little taster cups, it would equate to one sale. And we sort of think about that, five samples for one sale. The conversion of 20%, and you then know that the power of sampling a beverage you have confidence in, knowing that that's why you sometimes go into Starbucks and they go, would you like to sample any more latte? And sometimes you say no, sometimes you say yes. But clearly they knew if they got five people to try it, one person's going to buy it. And that person's going to probably like it and buy it again and again. That is, of course, a old school tactic that a lot of people use. <laughs> and back when I was wanting to learn more sampling, yes, I picked up this book back about 2000 called Dealing Crack. Sounds horrible to admit, here's a marketer in a professional type of setting who's admitting that he was picking up a book in 2000 about drug dealing and crack dealers. But I just wanted to get some insight to this. And I did learn some things, and I applied some of those. And a couple years ago, I saw this movie, American Gangster, which is, A, it's a brilliant movie, and B, it's a brilliant business-minded movie. Today's presentation is going to share tidbits from both of those fields. One a book, one a movie. Who here has read this book, Rework? Probably glad yeah, this is the great crowd to read this book. In there, they have a whole section talking about drug dealing. A whole section, two pages. And they say that we should spend more time being like it. Because they say that drug dealers, they make their products so good, so addictive, so can't miss, that giving customers a small, free taste makes them come with cash in hand. Think about products you sell. You probably give out kibbles and bits. That's a drug term for giving out little samples. Knowing that you believe in your product and it's so good, People are going to come back and buy more. So they kind of tease a little bit about this, but we're going to go much deeper. And we're going to learn more business lessons from drug dealers. 
The sound here is not as good, but maybe this is some background. Okay, so we work on the sound here, so I do have a couple more, couple more typical bits coming up. But basically, this is just giving you background about the movie and the drug pen back in the 70s, Frank Lucas. And Mr. Lucas here had a mentor. Mentor mattered to Frank because he was able to learn the ins and outs of the drug business. His mentor was a guy by the name of Bumpy Johnson. Bumpy Johnson taught Frank everything he knew. For 15 years, Frank Johnson learned from Bumpy, started off driving his car, and lo and behold, gained more responsibility as time went on. Frank Lucas praised his mentor by saying, yes, he was my boss, my teacher. He taught me how to take my time. Taught me that if I was going to do something, to do it with care and with love. Every person here should have a mentor in your business, because if you don't, then you are missing out on an opportunity to grow and to learn. I found that back in my day, I had a very mentor who happened to be my boss, Lisa Denny Compton. If Lisa Denny Compton didn't take the time to sit down with me on and keep weekly meetings, we all know we've had bosses where they find ways to say, project update meetings, I'm sorry, I'm too busy. Lisa would never skip those meetings. And I then passed people that I met with, would never skip an update meeting. Because that is a visible sign that you don't care about that person or that you're too busy. Mentors matter. But what also matters even more with inside a company, it's great to have a boss that's a mentor, but you also need a champion that's outside of your department. Because if you have an idea that you want to get sold in, back at Starbucks, I had a champion. Not in the marketing department, but in the operations department. Jim Morgan was my champion. Jim knew that if I had an idea, I had thought about the impact at the store level. You got baristas that are busy every single day doling out products and doing their daily duties. The last thing they want to have is a coupon at the main POS to pass off to customers because that interrupts their daily routine. However, if I'm a way to be able to get them that coupon to pass it out so it's more in their control and so they could weave it into their daily job, it would be able to get passed. Morgan was the champion who said, John, you've thought this through, we will approve it. Because he was the one communication person, the linchpin, that if Jim didn't champion, I didn't hit the stores. So I knew that I had to have a mentor and had to have a champion. I think we all have to have that if we want to get our product ideas, our marketing ideas. Next up here, see if we got the sound here. This up here is some advice on launching new products. Here we go with the sound. In the early 1970s, heroin was widely available in the streets of New York City. The practice was to dilute the heroin with sugars, chalk, flour, or powdered milk. By diluting the heroin, dealers to significantly stretch the product inventory and maintain their high prices without upsetting your customer base. Customers have come to expect lower potency heroin as the only choice, despite a growing number of dealers. So Frank Lucas found a void in the marketplace. People were selling cheap stuff. He wanted to sell higher quality stuff. He knew that the only way for him to really make a dent in a crowded marketplace was to be better than one else. Jack Welch sums this up in one line. It's brilliant. If you don't have a competitive advantage, don't compete. Why waste your time if your product is only good enough? Don't. Waste your time to make the product as good and as unique as you